Hello everyone. Welcome to the first video about my ACC plugin, which is a revamped version of the Blueprint 1, allowing for more flexibility and additional custom parameterization. There will be multiple videos to explain broadly how the system works using the example mannequin. The videos complement each other and take a lot of time to produce. This video will demonstrate how to create a species from scratch, aiding in learning how the plugin works. We'll cover the bare essentials, including 1. Creating the species, maturity, and gender assets. 2. Using the ACC creation component. 3. Implementing the ACC Creative Actor interface. We're going to see how to add a specimen using my ACC plugin. So basically, what is a species? It will be your customizable character with maturity levels and genders. There are already some examples such as Epicum and Freud. But in the context of the video, I'll show you how to do it from scratch. Based on the documentation, we'll see that initially we need to use data assets, and specifically species data asset. Next, we'll need to add this species data asset into the system via data table. For the example, we'll add the mannequin provided by Unreal Engine. You can create the resources in any folder and base them on the structure of my examples. Several specimens serve as examples, but you can also base yourself on these examples. Logically, we would have files for each species maturity gender recursively. So, back to our demonstration, I'm creating the species for the mannequin. Identifier corresponds to the species ID. So let's write mannequin, the species ID I choose to create for the demonstration. Others will be used everywhere. For the example, I will base myself on a species that I had already created it's quite useful in case of memory lapses. At least one maturity is required initially, a maturity needs to be created. To organize properly, I created in a corresponding folder. It will contain genders and data for the maturity, for example. For the example, I'm creating the male gender using the enumeration as the key. To organize things, we can create a folder for the gender and have the asset inside it. As you can see, this asset contains a lot of information. In my case, I will have the mesh, the default ABP, gender-specific data tables, etc. Head socket is not mandatory, especially if you have a mesh with the head as one.
About the data tables, it will be used stuff like for the eyes, eyebrows, heads, clothing, etc. Everything is modular, there are no predefined data tables as in the old version. We have good examples in the genders of Epic HMN. As you can see in the examples, there are data tables for head, hair, iris, brow, equip, shared item, and many others. We won't delve into the animation blueprint as it's not necessary, and I prefer us to focus on understanding how the system works first and foremost. We're abstracting the UI for now and focusing on the data. I'll use the base mannequin skeletal mesh. The mannequin won't have a separate head for the example. For now, I'm leaving the default UI of Epic HMN Mail. It allows customization of the UI used for the gender, but it's more advanced. Next, don't forget to specify the maturity within the species. Same for the gender within the adult maturity. For the example, we'll have the absolute minimum only. Next, you need to specify this species in the ACC system. Just FYI, if we look at the references of an Epic HMN species, we notice that it's referenced in a data table. So, it needs to be added to that data table. PS, or create another data table to replace it. We'll I'll test this in an empty map as I'll make sure to instantiate an actor character to show you how the system works. I'm creating a blueprint that serves as a simple test and will code inside it for the example. For now, I'm instantiating an actor from the example. and we'll send creation data to it. Then you'll need to get the ACC creation component, assuming it's used within the actor, of course. As we can see on the actor, we do have an ACC creation component, 
so we'll be able to retrieve it using git component by class. Regardless of the default mesh we have, it doesn't matter. So, from the component, we'll call the load creation function. This function is sufficient to detect the species that will be used and all the other parameters we'll send. Unlike the previous full blueprint version that required multiple function calls, which could make usage more complicated. For now, the data will be on the fly to understand how the basic system works. Creation base for the basic configuration, and we set the species we want to use. So, I advise you to verify the correct correspondence to ensure it works. Then, the desired maturity and gender. The system will automatically fetch the necessary data from the corresponding maturity and gender of the species in question. For now, I'm just showing you that this information is sufficient for the bare minimum. We can see clearly that the mesh is being used however. We see the default head mesh, which is normal. The solution can be, either you hide it in the character's blueprint, or you use another blueprint as a character without any separate head, I recommend having your own blueprint for the character. Also, when I update ACC, you might lose your modifications if you directly alter the example assets. Logic, since usually you have your own mechanics. It's why I'll show you how to do it if you had your own blueprint. I'll create a character blueprint from scratch. You'll see the implementation is quite simple and fast. You'll need to meet two conditions. One, have the ACC creation component. It's important because it handles the manipulation of meshes based on the creation data. Moreover, we'll need it when we call git component by class as seen previously. Two, implement the ACC creative actor interface, as we can see in the other example blueprint just FYI. The implementation of the interface will enable ACC creation component to retrieve the necessary meshes for its proper functioning. So, we implement the interface in our blueprint. In this example, we don't use a separate head mesh, because the mannequin mesh already has the head with the body, it's unnecessary. However, if you use separate heads, you'll need to specify it of course. Get base mesh is mandatory, usually, it's the same as the body. And there, we've completed the minimal implementation. Let's test our character to see if it works.
So, as we can see it works except for the fact that the mannequin is not on the ground. But that's another story that we will solve right away. Well, as usual, we still need to adjust the position and rotation of the mesh to have the foot on the ground. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we're abstracting the animation blueprint as it's not crucial for understanding the plugin at this point. I prefer we focus on the foundational aspects that already take up a lot of the videos. Good. We've seen how adding a species and the basics of loading creation data work. The next video will cover creating and using your parameters, namely group perm handler and perm handler. Thank you for watching the video and see you next time.